how to tackle the beast of St. Louis public schools, gifted and talented. This is a big topic. There are multiple schools that all have different things going on and the process itself of just enrolling and getting your kid into one of St. Louis public schools, gifted and talented schools can be super overwhelming, but that is exactly what I'm going to be talking about today. Hi, my name is Johanna Duran and I am a real estate agent with Circa Properties here in beautiful St. Louis, Missouri. And today I am talking about the St. Louis Public Schools Gifted and Talented Program. Now there are several schools within the system, um, so I'll give a little bit of information about all of those, but more importantly, give you information on the process on getting your child enrolled in one of these schools, which can be a little bit daunting and very confusing, and you will get lots of bad information from other parents. So hopefully I will get around all of that and actually give you the correct information. And if you want a more general primer about all of the options available to St. Louis City residents for schools, I did another video which covers the four main types of schools and gives some examples of those schools. So um, I will put a link to that right up here and you can click on that if you want more information on that as well. Okay, let's talk about the schools themselves. The schools, the gifted and talented schools are within the St. Louis public school system. They are one of their magnet schools, but then they are also within their own little department called gifted and talented. They have their own um, room resource area within the St. Louis public school system and they run kind of as their own department. So if you have additional questions about gifted and talented that I have not addressed, I will include their phone number down below. You can call them directly. I will say it's, uh, it is sometimes hard to get in touch with somebody there. Um, I have found that I had to leave a message, but when they call you back, they are very helpful. And um, sometimes you have to be diligent about getting that phone call back but they are very nice and very helpful when they do get back to you. All right, the schools themselves. Let's start with the elementary schools. There are three elementary schools, Kennard, Mallinckrodt, and Columbia. All three have start times of a little bit after nine o'clock. I believe it's 9.07 is the exact start time and then end at four or 4.07. Um, for all three of the schools, there's no catchment area. Like in certain schools, you have to live within certain boundaries to be able to go to the school. As long as you are a St. Louis City resident, you can go to the school, so no catchment area. And uh, the school, all of the elementary schools service pre-K through fifth grade. Um, one additional thing about the catchment area, as of right now, they, St. Louis Public Schools still does the voluntary interdistrict um, what we used to call busing. So if you live in the county and you go to a certain school, if you're living in a certain school district, then you can still send your kids to one of the gifted and talented schools. So right now there is only one middle school. It is McKinley. And it looks to me that they have recently updated their start and stop time. My understanding was McKinley used to start at 6.50 in the morning which there was a lot of backlash from parents on that. It is really early, which is one. But there's so much data out there about kids, especially in that middle school and high school age, needing more sleep. So I know that there's been a lot of pressure on um, SLPS to do something with the start times. I see now that they have updated their start times to 10 minutes after seven, which isn't a huge difference, 20 minutes, but you know, 20 minutes extra sleep to a 13 year old kid probably does make some difference. So start time now of 710, they get out of school at 210. Just like the elementary schools, there is no catchment area and the middle school services sixth, seventh and eighth grade. And finally, the high schools, there are two high schools, McKinley. So you can choose to keep your child in McKinley after middle school or Metro. And Metro has consistently been ranked 
one of the top schools in the state. So there is a lot of competition to get into Metro, which is something just to keep in mind. Um, the start times for McKinley and Metro are the same, 10 minutes after seven to 10 minutes after two. There is no catchment area and regular high school. It's, it services ninth, 10th, 11th, and 12th grades. So how do you get yourself into one of these schools? That is such a good question. It's tough um, because there are a lot of people that want to be in the gifted and talented schools, especially at the elementary level. But here is the process. The first thing that you need to do is get yourself tested. And what St. Louis Public Schools Gifted and Talented Office will have you do is fill out the application first. So you'll fill out the application for your child to be admitted to one of the schools. And at that point, they will start the process of getting you tested. I will tell you that the testing process, sometimes they will schedule you pretty far out in advance. At one point, one of the tests that my son took, I believe was scheduled six months out. And they will start testing when your child is, the earliest they'll test is three years and six months. So something to consider if you have really littles, if you've got maybe a two-year-old or a three-year-old and you're thinking about looking at the gifted and talented schools, you probably want to start thinking about testing. So now you filled out the application, you have scheduled the test and it's six months from now, what can you expect? When you get to the test, when you get to the point of the test, they are going to do two different tests. There's going to be an IQ portion of the test and there's going to be an academic portion of the test. Now the academic portion of the test can be pretty simple if you're having somebody tested, if you're having a child tested that's only three years and six months. I can tell you from experience that the academic portion gets a little bit more complicated when you have a child that's being tested at the third or fourth grade level. But um, there are those two portions of the test. And what they are going to require is that your child scores a 90% on both of the tests in order to qualify for a gifted and talented school. I will tell you from experience that the testing process can be super stressful. It's stressful for the kid, it's stressful for the adults, especially if this is the, the choice that you're really looking at. You really want to get them into one of the gifted elementary schools or middle school and high school. And um, preparing for the test, there's not really much in the way of preparation. They have four or five different types of tests that they can run at any time. If you are testing more than one time, they will give you different tests each time. They don't want the kids taking the same tests, so keep that in mind. Um, so there are sometimes a lot of emotion wrapped up for parents and for kids. And for that reason, my understanding is they will no longer give you the test results at the testing appointment. I'm assuming at some point they had problems with kids or with parents being super emotional about test results. So the way they deliver the test results to you now is through the mail and you usually get them three to five days, business days, after you have done the testing. So you've received your test results now in the mail and if, you, if your child did not score above 90%, you can reschedule the test again. Two things to keep in mind about that. They will only allow you to test once in a calendar year. So you are now waiting a full year to test again, which means that you are going to have to, if you're in one of the higher grades, if you're testing for kindergarten, first, second, third, you're gonna have to make other accommodations for a year. Um, and they will allow you to test only four times. So I actually have a child that was tested all four times and um, darn it all the heck, he would get above that 90% on the IQ portion every time, but could never make the academic thing fly. But that's how I know about how all of this works, because when you've been to the St. Louis Public School building multiple times for testing, you learn a lot about it. 
So if you are not one of those people that had to go through four different times of testing and you did get uh, a 90% score on both of the tests, which happened for my younger son, then now you are officially in the system. You have made it through the testing round and you're on to game show round number two, which is the application and admissions process. So what St. Louis Public Schools Gifted and Talented will do now is look at, you will be giving them your preferences. If you want to be in Mallinckrodt, if you want to be in Kennard, if you want to be in Columbia, they'll look at those and you can put a second place as well. Um, but, you know, I would recommend probably going with the one that's closest to your house. And they now are going to put you into the lottery system. So every year there are, you know, only, I think, 22 spots available for every grade level at each school and there are a couple hundred applications. So they're gonna throw your name into the hat and they will pull the lottery numbers. I believe they pull them in October for the following year. So um, they'll put your information in and you are now in the lottery. So on this part of the path, you can either get your name pulled and you are in or you get put on the wait list. If you get put on the wait list, I will tell you not to be too discouraged. My younger son, who did pass both tests the first time, was waitlisted at Mallinckrodt. He was 14th on the wait list, and he got in. So um, any, there's all those other people, there's a ton of people on the wait list, and they don't want to wait. They move, they find other options, and so hopefully those people take themselves off the list, and if they don't, the school contacts and says, hey, your kid's next on the list, we've got a spot, and they say, oh, we don't need it anymore, and then they go on to the next person. So even if you're 13th, 14th, 15th on the list, don't get discouraged. It happens. You can get in. Now, there's one additional track that St. Louis Public Schools just started last year, I believe it was last year, called the probationary period. So your child scores and over the 90th percentile for the IQ portion, but maybe scored in the 70th percentile for the academic portion. They will put you on a probationary period. So they will put you into the lottery to see if you can get a spot in the school of, of your choice. And then your child is in, allowed to enroll. And here is the kicker, and I, I don't really think that um, this is going to work out for a lot of people because what happens is they will retest your child I believe in March of that year of the school year that they're in so they're now attending Mallinckrodt and they got in on a probationary period and now it's March and they are going to retest your child on the academic portion if your child doesn't score above that 90th percentile again then they remove the child from the school. It doesn't happen in March, but I think they wait until the end of that school year. But, oh, so now you've got a kid that has gone to school for a whole year that's made friends with all of these people, and now you have to move them to another school. So that feels like that might not work for a lot of people. I mean, it could be something that people do want to give it a shot to see if they can make it work, but um, seems like an awful lot to put a kid through that again is a is a personal choice for the parent but the new probationary thing we'll see how long that lasts but that's a new thing that the gifted and talented office is doing as far as the culture of the school i can really only speak to Mallinckrodt. i imagine that Kennard and columbia and mckinley and metro are very similar to this but um the the What's taught at the school, at the gifted and talented school, is gifted education, but it's also everything is taught one level higher. So you're in first grade, you're actually learning second grade material. My son is currently in fourth grade, he's learning fifth grade material. So it's advanced. For the kids, sometimes it can be um, a little bit challenging. There is a good amount of homework that comes home every night. More, he is getting more homework, probably triple the amount of homework than my middle schooler is in sixth grade. So just something to keep in mind, there are a lot of parents that have very strong opinions about homework. 
I have found personally that at Mallinckrodt, like I said, I can only speak to Mallinckrodt, there is much more of a culture of the kid just needs to keep up. Um, even though it is a public school, there are not a lot of additional resources as far as helping a kid that might be falling behind in one thing or another. The teachers obviously are there for the kids and the, the teachers are phenomenal. Um, but there, there's not you know, a, a resource area or an additional person in the building that can help any of the kids that are struggling. The general attitude is your child is expected to keep up. And so um, I know several parents that have enlisted the help of tutors at home, which are great, great way to keep things moving and keep kids caught up or um, you know, gotten additional help at home as well. So that's one, one aspect of the gifted and talented. If you personally aren't interested in feeling kind of that pressure of like, you gotta keep up, you gotta keep up, then um, it might not be for you. So for other parents, um, conversely, they really want to push, the, push their kids and get their kids um, into more advanced schooling. So that could be a good option for you as well. As far as the parent culture, if, if that's a word, we'll call it that, the level of involvement from the parent group is very high. You have lots of parents that are super involved in the school. Lots of volunteering, lots of PTO um, involvement. There are lots of activities. There are lots of things for the kids to do. It's really great to see all of the parents that do get involved. I have seen and heard that at the middle school and high school level, that might drop off a little bit. They could just be because at that point, the kids are a little bit older and um, either don't want their parents as involved or don't need their parents as involved as the elementary school. But it is a very involved parent population. So that is, in a nutshell, the overview of the St. Louis Public School Gifted and Talented School System. Um, hopefully this has been helpful. And of course, as always, if you have comments or if you have questions, please either um, put them down below or get my contact information and get in touch with me. I'm happy to share all of the information that I have. There will be new information, new school information on other city school options coming out as I do more videos about them. And in general, there are new videos every week. So please subscribe. And um, I do hope this has been helpful. I hope you've learned something and have a great day.